Hopefully that better driver goes to qualifying and uh, went home in practice. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to the final round of the British Rift Championship. It's main event day, it's pro day, it's my day, it's the nervous time of the weekend for me. We're here in the merch shop, Adam is setting up, as you guys can see. We've got our new posters, which are pretty cool, of the Corvette and the MX-5, and we also got a brand new special edition khaki green version of our core hoodie. So this is what keeps us kind of motivated to uh, keep pushing out merch, because people keep buying it, we keep get put tires on the car, so it's amazing, it kind of all works full circle. This morning, though, I'm deciding not to drive this because I've done enough laps in that and I'll get into that in the later stages of practice but what I've decided to do is take this for a spin. So Josh obviously was driving yesterday in the MX-5 and Josh is a little inexperienced maybe to give us some feedback on what's good or bad with the car because you've never driven a car with loads of power Josh, you've never driven a car with loads of grip so I don't know if it's the car or it might be you or it might just be things that we need to change very simply. Well, I say the problem is when Wayne says how does it feel? You don't know. I don't, really, I, I, I don't have a high power car to compare it to. Yeah. Yes, it's faster than the Auto MX-5, but where do I go from there? So the big difference here is you were running road tires on the car yes. yesterday. I've now put on the super soft semi-slicks. So this is kind of, with the whole drivetrain of this car, obviously the gearbox is take it, but the shafts and the diff is kind of untested. No one's really tested the RX-8 shafts and diff to high horsepower semi-slicks or anything like that. So seeing as you are comfortable in that, I want you to drive this one on and see if it can take it. And if it can, if it breaks now, it's the best time for it to break yeah, because- The thing we can do is we can have two high, like high intensity runs where we run it, we're running on really low pressures, soft suspension. This is as much grip as you can put into the car. We'll see if the front end can handle it. We'll see if the shafts and diff and all that stuff can handle it. And it gives us feedback because it's better for it to break now, but it doesn't matter and we have spares than if you went to a battle and then you decided at that point to put loads of grip into the car. Would it spin the wheels? Would it go? Would it drift? Uh, just to get some feedback. So at least if we go home with that feedback, uh, we'll be able to say, right, this is what we need to change to make the car better. So other than that, I'm gonna jump in the MX-5, I'm gonna see how it goes, and uh, Wayne's gonna bring the Corvette out to the gridding area, so I'm gonna jump between the two cars, uh, which will be really mind-melting, because I'm going from left hand, right hand drive to left hand drive, uh, uh, turbo to non-turbo in the space of two laps, so that's gonna be pretty crazy, but look, it'll be good practice, that's all I can say. on the straights, a weapon through the first corner, but when the slow speeds with 11 PSI and the super soft, won't spin the wheels. It very much looked like that. Um, Just yeah. wouldn't spin them. But Jesus, you should go drag racing. You should go drag racing. I that told you, it's fast up to the first corner, isn't it? And even through the first corner, I have to slow up because I'm going to hit your man both times. It's so fast uh, with high speeds. But at the low speeds, it just, yeah, it wants to work. Anyway, can we go? Right, and yeah, it's interesting to know then, because then, with that engine in the old 180, he ran the West Lakes and everything like that, and he ran them absolutely fine. So, that really is, for the first time, shows how grippy that chassis actually is. And if you dial it in, it could be an absolute weapon of a thing.
too hard anyways. It's not the smoothest of starts for you. Not a bad practice session. And I think I'm overdriving it, I'm overthinking it, and I've gripped the car up way too much that it's really hard to drive. I'm still quietly confident that the car will do it. I just yeah. I reckon you, you find a groove. Yeah, find a groove. Taking a bit of advice and he's actually calmed down a little bit, which is actually great in his favour. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that for qualifying. I don't know. It's either gonna happen or it's not now at this stage. So we'll see. I mean, it's been it's been an interesting one. I think I've got like I had two runs today, which would have put me top five in qualifying, and the rest of it wouldn't, wouldn't have qualified. Me. So it's a mixed bag. Like change the suspension. It's not like I'm fighting the car as much to drift. It's just drifting like when I want it to. So I think I could be pretty accurate in, in qualifying. All right, but. First run's gonna tell everything, isn't it? She's a good car, she seems a better driver at the moment, so hopefully that better driver goes to qualifying and uh, went home in practice. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys, I want to take a second to thank one of our partners here at Drift Games, Mobile One Oil. We use Mobile One in all of our street cars and our drift cars, and even the Mobile One Mustang, which runs 900 horsepower, does so reliably because we use the best lubricants from Mobile One. Check out their full range now, get them in your car, and stay on track. That's what, dude. I would say all the cars before you, the standard's been fairly high, it's kind of high 70s, mid 80 runs, so whatever you want to make of that. Okay, I'll give it a go! Oh, I don't know what's going to happen next, but we'll give it a go. I'll try a big flick, see what happens. Is Dave Egan in this carbon fibre Corvette? And if we don't see fireworks from this, then I'll be very disappointed. Big flick from David Egan. Can he hold it all the way out to the line? He does. There it's a go. wonderful line from David Egan. Cuts the bank ever so slightly to get down into clip three. A big handbrake drag. It's a big car to slow down as he comes through. Clip four, absolutely beautifully. Flicks it into clip five. Very wide on clip five. Holds it on the edge of the track nicely, though, as he comes powering across the line. And he is not short of power, Mike. Not short of power, Carl. That's a very good one for Dave. Yes! Yeah, I can hear you. Solid run. That was an 83. So that puts you near the top end so far. Okay, so good. Anything I can improve on? The only way they're really giving the max points is like a really aggressive entry, but I mean, you were high up on the bank and everything like that. You could have been a little deeper coming into the first hairpin, more to the left hand side of the track. Apart from that, like. I think the judges have kind of set themselves with two low scores for two good runs at the moment. So either they're going to change that for the second round of scores, or they're just going to keep on scoring like that. Whereas like they're not in the 90s. I think at 86 or 87 is the highest that they've scored, and that was like a perfect run. So I say you're fairly solid as it is there. Takes the nerves off. I'm feeling good in the car too. Let's get this going, big. Big balls, Dave, big balls. Oh, listen to the clutch kick of Dave Egan. He entered so early, completely the other side of the track. Look at the pace from Dave Egan. Now as he comes for a little bit of a twitch into clip three, makes it lovely, nice and deep through clip four. Smoke pouring off the back of his Corvette. He's got a very good run so far. Yeah, I see Dave now doing the second half of his run. Absolutely perfect on that ID line. He improves further with an 87 points, putting him into ninth position. Was that enough impact? That was good. That was good. That was I impacted that I took the tyre off yeah, the rim. Yeah, the tyre came off. Yeah, yeah, I was just after the finish line, I came back so wide, I hit the concrete, and then I went, I have no grip, but I just what floored. What have you done? And look, once again, the strong wheel's not a bother. <laughs> American. Yeah, Dave, don't even run the tires next time. Is that a big I enough see. flick? Yeah. Well done. She works Nailed what she it. works. What a car.
They were honestly your two best runs that you did there. <laughs> by all more, you, by the all more. Yeah. They're the only ones that matter. So yeah, let's get it ready for top 32 and I'm feeling a bit more comfortable now. Car is working great, won't change anything. I think don't change your thing, nah, just drive, drive it like that. She's good. Have you seen how Wayne, Wayne treats your car? I'm gonna make a very unflat car next year because there's a shelf on the back. <laughs> Grand job. Nice casual before the parade. All right, so we're going into the battles. I've got this. <laughs> We're gonna have some fun. Battle time, Kevin Quint. This is gonna be fun. Um, you know what? I have nothing to lose. If I lose to Kevin, he's a great driver. It doesn't bother me as long as I give it a good go. If I win, stream street. So, yeah, it's one of those battles where you're like such a high level driver um, that I'm gonna learn a lot from this battle. I think I'm gonna be able to push that a little bit harder, go a little bit closer. I'm not gonna let him away on the run in. Hopefully get as close as I can and uh, get the two cars home. Well, I'm not promising that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna say, getting the two cars home at this point with Kevin Quinn, he's, uh, he's a, bit, a bit wild. He's a bit aggressive, but we love <laughs> Kev. He's a good friend of ours, so uh, we're gonna have a bit of banter up for I'm sure, on the start line. And then, yeah, put on a show for the fans. Happy to qualify, really, really tough grid today, so it's bonus time from here. As I said, first season for the car, it's only my third event in it. It's my, I think, probably my first event with the car working absolutely perfectly. So I'm really happy I'm getting some good runs in. So I'm gonna go try and do two more. I think this is one of those battles where he knows what he needs to do. He just needs to do it. Very Irish and very loud. Very Irish and very loud, yeah. Oh yeah, it's definitely loud. Yeah. <laughs> I've already gone deaf by the running by the window. Big Whoa! initiation. Oh my goodness, can he hold it? He's getting it all wrong on the initiation. Kevin did a very good job not to make contact. Even though they have a three initiate, Kev's just like still stuck to him, but very, very sloppy or unchaseable lead run, would you say, Mike? Uh, yeah, to start off with, uh, definitely, and then um, then some mistakes from Kevin later on, but I think he was a bit unsure on what Dave Egan was doing, so... Wasn't the best. Uh, scrappy ways. run yeah, from Jesus. both drivers. I, I, imagine it's a ten, I imagine the big advantage are a 10-0 so far, so... That's it, it's two options, then we can't be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, a handbrake drag from Kevin Quinn. That allows Dave Egan to sit right on the rear quarter. <laughs> Kevin Quinn as they come down in for clips three and into four. Oh, a huge dive by Dave. Is he going to get himself caught up? He just manages to escape oh, getting caught up. Comes through the smoke and glues himself. Oh, and a straight in from Dave Egan. Oh, shuts it down. Oh, shut the car down. Hold it on. Went into the first corner, just completely understeered straight up the bank. I dropped the pressures for that battle from qualifying. And there's obviously so much grip in the back of the car. When I throw it in, the front just started to wash up the bank and I couldn't get it back. And then the chase, I just went too aggressive and I just gave up. Like, bad driving. So, uh, I need to learn more. That's the worst I've driven all weekend. Sorry, you didn't make a tip yourself. No, but it, I thought I had a lot more in the car this weekend. That's, that's driver error and probably a little bit of naivety to drop the pressures without it affecting the front of the car. Obviously they couldn't do the big flick in, that takes a lot of the understeer out of the car. Whereas when you're doing kind of a shorter initiation, it's sort of a little bit more washy. But like the front just went off on me. And I obviously didn't warm the tires enough or something, I don't know, but tires are really good. They worked in the wet and they worked in the dry, so either I put too much grip in the back and it pushed the front, or I just didn't come in the right way, so I don't know. It's a weekend of learning curves. A lot of learning, like I need a lot of practice in this car. Like I can get a good run on my own when it's just on my own, but against someone else, if they do something different, I'm not adjusting quick enough, so yeah. Just didn't go well. You have those weekends, but I think I'm having too many of them now to be starting to feel really excited about it, so. Um, I think what I'm gonna do now is just practice. I think just a bit more practice, a bit more time, a bit more learning in the car, but yeah, not great. So, it is what it is.
packing away earlier shop. than expected. Yeah, it is what it is. It's been a kind of a tough year. Building the cars, getting them ready. A few events where things haven't really gone our way. So yeah, it's one of those where you've got to just kind of learn a little bit from it. Try your best to, to think about the next couple of days of how you can improve and maybe just take a little break. Just relax a bit and not just put so much stress on trying to get better all the time. And obviously making the videos, you think I have to do well, I have to do well, I have to do well. Everybody's judging you, but maybe just take a little bit of a breather try and uh, calm down a little bit, take a little bit of pressure off ourselves, have a little look at the settings and the data we got this weekend, and hopefully we'll come back fighting stronger at the next one. Yeah, could have been more, could have been better this weekend. Obviously Josh not qualifying, me not getting to the top 32 wasn't ideal, but that's sport, that's drifting, you don't always have good days. So you gotta take the bad ones and uh, yeah, just deal with them. And hopefully the bad ones make the good ones all the sweeter. So we'll see you guys on the next episode where we'll be back to our usual antics. And thank you guys so much for watching this uh, three part series from the last round of the BDC. We tried our best for you guys. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for us. And we'll be back stronger. We'll see you then.